Welcome. Good it's, uh, morning. This is Up in the Valley, and uh, I'm Mike Austin, uh, one Carol of the hosts. I'm Carol Lawson, the other half. The other host. The other, the other host. host. And uh, thank you for joining us today. The uh, sponsor of our program today is Brett, Brett Douglas. Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> and the beautiful <laughs> set piece that oh, he made for Oh, it's so pretty. He's getting a lot of press from that He's thing, really getting he? a lot, you know. But, and, but, but it, you want to know something about the sunshine. It is going to be a scorcher today. Is it? Yep. It's, it's not supposed to get too hot, though. Yeah, I thought I heard like 80. It's hot and humid. And, well, anything past 72 to me is hot, you know. Oh, guess what, Mike? What? Guess what? Oh, no. Yum Yum needs a good home, people. I don't know the whole situation. All I know, it's just a little one-year-old kitten. It's female. She's been spayed. She's been vet checked. She's had her little shots. You can call 832-0630 for any information. Yum Yum needs a home. Everybody needs a Yum Yum. Hey, did you read that backwards? Did you read that number backwards? Eight three two zero six three zero. I know, but did you read it back yeah. backwards? That's yeah. good. You're Was talented. That good? Yeah, you're talented. You could probably be an insurance salesman or something if you can read backwards. Really? You have to be able to read backwards and upside down if you're an insurance well, salesman. Well, so I'm pretty good. crafty. That's why. The, uh, I see in the leader telegram that the uh, Chippewa Valley Brigade, you know, that's that new drum and bugle corps that's right, get, uh, right. got it going. They got a surprise uh, overnight guest on Tuesday. Who was that? In fact, it was over 100 surprise guests. Who was that? Well, it was the Capitol Regiment of uh, Columbus, Ohio. It's one of the oh. top drum and bugle corps in the nation. Kind of stuff. And they stopped in and practiced here and stuff like that. It's, oh, my You sinners. know, in that realm of drum and bugle corps, that would be like, like having... You know, uh, the President of the United States stopped in for a visit or right. something like that. Right, exactly. I mean, it's major, when, you, so. when you would be running for city council or something. Yeah. Something like right, that. Right, right. Yeah, that was, exactly. was kind of cool. That was yeah, kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. So what else? Hey, did you have a good 4th of July? You know, it was a good 4th of July. How many fireworks did you see? It was a long 4th of July. But well, actually, on Saturday, Saturday night, we, we saw, saw fire the fireworks. Oh, my stars. We saw the fireworks at, uh, at the um, O'Neill Creek. Creek Campground. We want to take time out there. to thank Mike and Judy. Oh, my stars that in was the morning. A, it was a wonderful show. But... Then. Monday night oh. at uh, Carson Park. My goodness. All the festivities on Monday were fantastic, yes. which leads us to our guest today. Well, yeah, we're in a, in a little bit here. We're going to have Carolyn Barstead from the Paul yes. Bunyan Museum, one of the two museums that's yes. up in Carson Park. Uh, that, I never uh, knew that had so much wonderful oh, stuff in there. It is great. So it's going to be exciting to be able to talk to yes. her. Yes. And uh, that's going to be coming up in the next segment. Really? Well, good. That'll be interesting. But what else is happening? There's so many things. You know, like we always say, Thursday is the day to go to the Chippewa Museum of Chippewa Technology. Falls. And Chippewa Falls Museum, Museum of, of Industry, Industry and, and Technology. Technology. And there for just go. $2 for your child, up to even senior high school, they have something great going on every Thursday. Yeah, and what did I notice? They got something going on at the Chippewa Valley Museum uh, uh, every day too for a while. I got it on one of those really? sheets. Oh, we have so much information. We just right. sometimes it's hard to do it all. The the deadline to submit your entries to the Beaver Creek photo contest is Sunday, July the seventeenth. So they're running yep. out of time. You better hurry Categories up. Categories are through. landscapes, scenic, man and nature, birds, animals, close ups, dynamics of nature, and a special youth category for photographers sixteen and younger. So if you have little kids running around the house and have a camera, you know, they're always You know, if up. I remember right, Joe, Dr. Joe Motto, who oh. took that picture right, right up the there, Eagle. I think that had something to do with the um, uh, Beaver Creek Museum, Did too. Did it really? All photos I'm submitted not, ready sure. to hang will be on display yeah. at the Nature Center from mid-September through October due the, to the limit display. It's limited display place, you know, but... Uh, you have to, um, it's only It's only a dollar entry fee oh, for my stars. That's great. That's a good deal. You too can take a photo. Right. 
There's so That's much interesting because there. there's a whole new realm in photo photography now with digital yeah. photography. Oh, I know. Now, if you like, don't like, jo it. like Joe Amato and that picture up there, he the uh, that is a digital picture. So you know, a lot it of is. film photographers are are uh, you know they're sticking eagle. with film because you know once you get to know film, it's yeah. it's uh, you know, you like working with right, it. But right, some right. of them are entering the brave new world of digital. And then it's bringing a lot of other people that weren't in photography before right. in because right. of the digital. And then another thing out to Beaver Creek is the annual butterfly count. Now this is just too fantastic of a time to pass up. And that's going to be held Tuesday, July the 12th at the Wise Nature Center. Training begins at 9 a.m. and the count is from 10 a.m. to 2.30. Registration is preferred, no fee. It's the 30th annual North American Butterfly Association butterfly count. <laughs> oh, you got that. that was almost more than you can handle. Uh, almost, but not quite because it's me, you, you know. Can do, you can I do can it. do it. There's a lot of other stuff going up. The good, the bad, and the ugly. No, it's not the movie. What is it? It's a program You talking about me again? No, it's a <laughs> it's a program on garden insects from nine seven seven PM to nine PM on Mondays, July the eleventh, with this which is just coming around the corner right, at the right, Wise Nature Monday. Center, Beaver Creek Reserve. It's just so cool. There's so much here, there, everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do. Hey, did you hear about that uh, uh, dog that has nine lives? Well, was that the dog named Luger, or was that the other dog? Well, it's uh, Glenn Beasterville's dog, and apparently got spooked. It was, oh, uh, that's Luger. Spooked. Is that? I think so. Uh, he got spooked from the fireworks and and uh, bailed out into oh. the. Uh, water and he got had to get rescued. Oh, and he's a cute little dog. He almost looks, I don't know what kind he is, he's maybe a mixed breed, but he almost looks like, a, he had little short legs, almost like a weenie dog. Yeah, it was an off-duty uh, mail carrier uh, mm -hmm. is the one that uh, yeah, rescued oh, good the thing dog. he was done with work. Luger, you're right. Do yes. You recognize Luger as Beasterville's beloved oh. pet. And, and it's uh, old. Fetched it's an it old out. dog and it's got nine lives like a cat. Like That's yum neat. yum, yum yum, yum yum. Now you ta right. you talked about uh, the. the I talked Beaver about it all. Creek. Well, it seems like. But I did had you know that Lutheran Hospital go. is going to have their 100th birthday party? That's what I was looking for. July 14th through July 15th That's from 11 right. to 3 at Luther Middleford on Bellinger Street. And, and you know who's helping them out with that, don't you? Who's all Sheriff Bob. I know my buddy. Don't forget that we did a documentary. Yes. Uh, the, uh, about Sheriff Bob and his history with the yeah. uh, with the TV show, I know. and you can get copies of that documentary by calling us eight three nine five zero six seven. You can call down here and order your own copy of it. Speaking, of, are we giving anything away today, or is that the second half? Uh, we're out of time here. Maybe well, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get it in at the end. We'll do that we'll later. It. Hey, we Stay are cool. out of time for this segment, <laughs> but uh, we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, yep. Carolyn Barstead from the Paul Bunyan Logging. Museum is going to be here, okay. and we're going to talk about what happened on the 4th and talk about That's all the fantastic. things that you can do down there. So uh, we'll be right back. Thanks. At the heart of every great community is communication. When service organizations or nonprofit groups need to reach out to the Chippewa Valley, community television is here to help. When you need to know what your government is doing and want to make your voice heard, you need community television. Your friends and neighbors have information, expertise, and talent. Community Television has the audience. Community Television, cable channels 11 and 12, local television, available only on Charter Cable. Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is Carolyn Barstead. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. It's you really know, nice to be here. That was uh, just a blast on Monday, I tell you. There was so much stuff going on over there. I just couldn't believe it. The uh, uh, people got to experience... Uh, the log sawing, not only looking at it, but they were actually had their hands on the end of the saw. I saw yes. them, uh, the sawing. Yes. So tell us a little bit about well, that. Well, we had a great, great day on the Fourth of July. Uh, the um, the person that was doing the log sawing was Fred Bass. He's an intermediate sawyer, and came into the camp and volunteered to do that for us that wow. day. Um, and Fred said at the end of the day, he thoroughly enjoyed it because he had people lined up from the minute he set up until after the closing time actually and and uh, small people big people everybody but well, they all when went I heard away. The, when I heard the one girl say that she thought it was better than a video game 
Uh, then I, then I, <laughs> <laughs> there must be something there. Well, and they all took away a little chunk of wood that oh. they had sawed off with that two-person cross-cut saw. So they had a good time. That's neat. And what else? I saw some horses over there. Yes. The other, the other big attraction at the Paul Bunyan Logging Museum was the, the Belgian draft horses that were there. The Peterson family brought the horses over for the day and set it up so that people could come right up close and pet the horses, oh, talk man. to the horses, and learn a little bit about the, the horses. They stayed there all day and the horses were so patient. They walked around the area and had a chance to really give people a good look at a beautiful team of horses. So we were, we were so fortunate to have them. Yeah, we had uh, Craig Yamauchi went over there late, uh, later in the afternoon and uh, uh, was taking a shot and realized he was on the wrong end of the horse, he oh, said. Oh, uh, <laughs> bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We were, we were very happy with the 4th of July, Mike. We had, uh, at, between the Chippewa Valley Museum and the Paul Bunyan Logging Museum, we had uh, about 2,600 people there. And oh, we good. just welcome everybody from the Chippewa Valley. We would love to have the local people come. And, and see us on a regular basis. Well, that's um, what I was saying all day, Monday. I, you, know, I, you know, first of all, you guys, uh, both you and the Chippewa Valley Museum had free admission yes. on the 4th of July. Yes, we did. And what I, what I kept saying all day is, you know, if you didn't get down there, shame on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. if you are thinking you're gonna wait until next year, shame on you. Don't yes. wait till next year, yes. come on. I mean, the, uh, when uh, Rob and I came down there uh, a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and did that mm -hmm. tour, yeah. I, I felt so bad that I hadn't been down there in the length of time I had. There, there are so many neat things down there and it is so, it's just awesome. All Thank the you. things uh, Thank you. That, that you got going on there. We're really proud of it and, and we've done a lot of work right, with it. And things change, so if you haven't been there for a while, you need to come back down and to yes, pay a visit, right? Yes, This winter we put on a big new addition and so we have a whole new entry area. We have uh, restrooms that will accommodate all the bus tours that come through. We have about 6,000 school children that go through each year. Wow. And they come on, on bus loads of, of kids. And so we're really happy with our new addition. It's a beautiful, beautiful addition to our, to our whole camp. And we've added, um, we're in the process now of opening a new room there that um, gives a little history of, of the clear cutting and what happened afterward with uh, the DNR and so on. Um, we, we do keep improving and changing and growing and so on. And well, you know, people uh, can just learn a lot about their own heritage, their own uh, history. And, you know, I, I realize that I gu I'm guilty sometimes of, you know, going back just a few years and then, boom, I want to jump all the way back to Norway. You know, sure. for, Absolutely. Because that's where I come from. I forget that there's this whole period, you know, there that's fascinating. And the clear cutting story is a, is a fascinating story. I mean, in one way it was a disaster, yes. but in another way it was a, it was just a, a image of what how uh, a community can rebound mm -hmm. from something mm -hmm. and and turn direction and get come around and and basically you know bring back the forest and and respond to something that they did wrong in the first place. So absolutely. Well, Carolyn, we're out of time, but quick before we uh, go for the break, when is the museum open? And uh, and just remind people where it's at. Okay. We're at Carson Park, and uh, you will find your way easily once you get to the park. It's uh, $4 for adults, $1.50 for children ages 4 to 17. We're open every day from 10 until 4.30 through the first Monday in October. And we hope to see you there. Yeah, come on out. Uh, you'll, it's just great. It's a bargain. It really is. Uh, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, uh, Carol and I will wrap up the show. So we'll be right back.
Welcome back. I love that museum. Oh, it is great. It is just amazing. What a it jewel. Really is. It what really a is. jewel we have right in our backyard. I know, I and, know. Uh, People are taking off and going on trips and driving days and days, days to go to in museums and things when right here in your backyard. Yeah, you got to get over there. You, you do. There. You really, really do. So, hey, first person who calls 839 5067 will win a free <gasps> copy of the Upward Air Show. This is the, two, the 2002 Air Show. It's two hours of packed action. Not only does it show yeah. all the all the uh, acts all and, the stuff acts and the everything air. that happened, but interviews with yes. pilots and other people associated with it. Uh, 839-5067, first person to call it, you got it. Very good. No bloopers, though, on that one. <laughs> no, I think we we didn't have enough room for the bloopers. <laughs> there, we just, that's we another barely <laughs> packed the whole uh, thing. That is a really good tape. I've watched that so, on Channel 11 before. So, so what's coming up on Channel 11? Well, we're going to be in the reruns tonight at 5.30, so if you want to see this over again, want to see us again. <laughs> or if someone else missed it, you can tell them that we're yeah. on at 5.30. Well, that's what I was going to say. Sure. Or if someone else missed it. No. But you can't win the video. You no, can't win the video sorry, you got to call right now, 839-5067. Yep. Um, Happy Trails is on tonight, you know, Sheriff Bob and Dr. Lou Fraze. There you go. Dick Feeney, who has always has wonderful programming here on Channel 11, talk is on about, at 8 yeah, o'clock. Talk about history. Mm -hmm. Man, he's got some great it, programs. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Um, we've got uh, John's Movie Corner at 9.30. Yep. And at 10 o'clock, it's the Running Water pot Poetry Poetry Slam. <laughs> poetry Slam. And at midnight, there's something, there's the film festival from the university. Now, is right. that a whole bunch of stuff? And uh, Mike Johnson just won the uh, air show video. Thanks, Thanks Mike, for Mike. watching. We appreciate it. You're going it. to enjoy that. Yep. Um, there's a lot of great stuff always going on. You can watch us in reruns. And, and tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, you can watch Uncle Boob. Uncle Boob. He's the, uh, he had he, to everyone be needs a good, good bad, bad example. example. And that Uncle would be Boob's Uncle Boob. Model. And you know, he was the prop, so to speak, in the 48 hour video 41 hour, yeah. 41 41 hour, hour video yeah. contest. Yep, that's great. So, and then, I can't uh, wait to see that. Uh, after lunch today, uh, that we got a program at 1 o'clock on Channel 12 about the art in Phoenix Park. And then at 2 o'clock, oh. we're going to rerun that uh, meeting that the Eau Claire County had on strategic planning. What is the art at Phoenix Park? Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but they, that, that, that was a meeting to decide what type of art to get and to really? get solicit art to have down there. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, and, and it is interesting. Very good, very good. Uh, we have uh, World War I and World War II vets remembered at 4 o'clock. Okay. 6.30, we have one of our uh, series in your county government. We did a whole series Talk, going through every department of the county government, That's and good. it's really People interesting don't understand to understand sometimes what, right. who's doing well, what. Well, it's job. interesting to learn a little bit more about uh, what your county government does for you, and this is a great chance to do it. And then don't forget on channel 12, mm -hmm. you can listen to it 101.9 WRFP LP on the radio? FM. You can listen to channel 12, 12 on, the radio. on the radio. On a, on a radio, and I've, I have... I've uh, heard you on the radio. It was neat. It, well, what I really like about it is when you're driving around and running errands and yep. things like that, you can like listen to the city council meeting right. or the plan commission or the yeah. county board right. meeting and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes you may feel like it's hard to justify taking a couple hours and just sitting down and watching a long government meeting, but, heck, you can catch a lot of it just while you're driving around. Doing so 101.9, don't forget. There you go. Before we go, can I say yes, one more we, thing? Yes, we have to do the kitty thing again. That's all there is Yum to Yum it. needs a good home. Yum Yum is one-year-old spaded female. Vet checked, shots, everything. Look at that little face. Don't you want a Yum Yum in your life? 832-0639. No, hey. wait a minute. I said that wrong. 832-0630. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hey, we're out of time. Don't forget the plan commission will be playing back again yeah. at noon on Saturday for you plan commission buffs. And we're all going, going on vacation, so we'll be in reruns and other people will be here right, now. Right, right. You'll get to see uh, someone else uh, uh, host the show, which will be Well, which we will are fun. gone. Hey, uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you on the reruns, and otherwise uh, the program will be back on uh, Monday at 530. So thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.